Hello YouTube, this is Dragonheart and welcome to a review video for Telltale Games Game of Thrones Episode 1 Iron from Ice. Time for an intro video. I'll see you on the other side. Okay, so to begin with we are going to talk a little bit about the story of this game and before we do begin this will be a spoiler warning here I will be going in depth about this game and the things that happened in this game in the first episode so if you don't want to know about the plot or what happens in the plot or with the characters then I suggest clicking off this video right now but for those of you that don't want to be spoiled for those of you that uh, you know have played the game or don't mind about spoilers then hello welcome join me <laughs> anyway let's just uh, crack on so first of all story the story is the House Forester, that's the house that you play as. They are loyal bannermen of House Stark. And basically the game takes place during the events of the Red Wedding. That's exactly where the game starts off. You're plopped right in, in the deep end. And you're introduced straight away to Garrett. Now Garrett is a loyal squire to House Forester. And he's kind of looked upon as sort of like a son kind of figure to the Lord of uh, House Forest and um, yeah he you know starts off the you got some tough choice straight away do you warn the Lord or do you help your friend and you know stuff like that basically and it's, it's cruel the way the game starts is cruel and it's you know it's bloody lots of bloodshed and it just throw you know it threw me completely when I played it, it was, I was pleasantly surprised with that, that with that uh, introduction it, it was intense straight away it was like oh my god am I making the right choice oh my god did I just cause this guy to die and that's what I love with Telltale Games they do a very good job uh, of that and Garrett I suppose out of all the characters he's the one which you can kind of role play with the most because uh, later on down the line once you've once you've returned the sword of the house back to um, Iron Wrath you, you know you know you you kind of have a choice on the way back you see your father actually getting murdered by um, White Hill soldiers White Hill soldiers, uh, White, House White Hill, incidentally, are great rivals of House Forester, and the White Hills are after the Ironwood. So there's been a long kind of dispute between the two houses for a very long time now, and House White Hill are bannermen of House Bolton. So, you know, the Boltons have just taken over control in the north because of the Red Wedding, and it's just total chaos. The whole north is kind of turning in on itself, and unfortunately for House Forrester they're kind of caught in the middle of it. Do they do they swear fealty to the Crown and to um, House Bolton, because House Bolton are now theoretically in, in charge in the North or do you try and survive on your own? And that's what I like, you know, it's like, it's kind of like the Walking Dead Telltale game where, you know, the whole point is to try and survive and, and interact with these characters in this kind of environment and it's, just, it's a very similar kind of approach in this which I actually enjoyed, the whole kind of apocalyptic survival, that's what it's like with the house, it's like, oh my god have I made the right choice? You know, did that character just die because of something which I said? If I play it differently, you know, will things change? And okay, there is a kind of a negative point as well with this. You know, in this review, um, it does follow a lot of the the same structures of other Telltale games. So, more often than not, if you play two or three playthroughs, the decisions that you make in this episode don't change an awful lot. You more or less get to the same result. But you just take a different path to get to that result, so which is it's good in a way because you you know everybody gets a different experience when they play. You, you it it makes the game, you know it does make the game gives it a bit more of a replay value. You can play it two or three times and have a different different dialogue, you know perhaps a different character appears in one place whereas he wouldn't have appeared if I had said or done something else something else. So you know it does offer some variety, but um, yeah the game you know it. The story, the narrative is great. It's, I think they picked a very good kind of uh, place within the Game of Thrones timeline to to you know to choose. And it, House Forrester is definitely a good choice. And the good thing about House Forrester is they they were only mentioned in A Dance with Dragons in kind of passing. So there there aren't really an awful lot of details in the whole kind of histories and lore of the Song of Ice and Fire, you know, novels. Um, and the, of course the TV show so they had a lot of room to kind of develop their own characters and uh, another negative point I guess I could say is that the characters are kind of copy and pasted from House Stark you've got your honourable leader you've got your kind of 
outcast, which is, uh, which is uh, Garrett in this case, who's been sent to the wall, incidentally, which is the same, exactly the same thing as what that what happened with uh, John John Snow. Um, you've got Mira, who's this kind of you know who's the daughter who's involved in the kind of political um, games in King's Landing, the, the Viper's Nest, as I call it, the Snake's Nest, and um, she's basically the substitute for Sansa Stark, basically pleading for her family in King's Landing. Oh, you know, don't, don't my father deserves a trial? Don't kill my father and all that kind of thing, which you know from the TV show, and it's kind of carried over a little bit here. She's basically in this in this game. She's basically pleading with Marjorie Tyrell to. You know, help her get her to plead to the king, King Joffrey, to help my family. My family's in danger, and Marjorie Tyrell, you know, she is great in this game, and that goes for Tyrion and Ramsay Bolton, which we'll talk about in a moment's time, and of course uh, Queen Cersei or Queen Regent Cersei. They're the actual voice actors from the television show, which is an absolute bonus because to actually have the you know the, the authenticated facial facial work done and the voice acting just makes the game more pure and you know I'm, I'm going to say this now at this point in this review out of all the official Game of Thrones games that have been released this one has been the most immersive the most well done and I think choosing Telltale Games was a definite you know it was a great choice it was a great business move as well um, the whole point of it being episodic and it's going to be six episodes altogether is a little bit of a downer it means that I won't be able to finish this game now and pill probably 12 months time because each episode takes about two months until until the next one's released so that would be about 12 months altogether for six episodes so you know it does mean you gotta wait a year but it's good in a way as well because it means that you know you're not kind of you know in, in today's modern kind of gaming society you pick up a new game you play it you play it for like a week and then once you've completed it and done some of the side quests and stuff you put it down and you might not play it again and it's nice for a game like this that you know it keeps you drawn in and it keeps you constantly you know gripped to your seat because like all of a sudden now i've played this game as you you know if you've if you're a fan of my channel or subscriber to my channel you may have watched my my playthrough of this and you know i really enjoyed it and you could probably tell that from the commentary and i'm now looking forward to seeing the decisions that are made in this episode how effective were they do they carry over or hold great weight in episode two you know for example um when you're playing as ethan who is the young lord um in this game he's the third playable character you have to have a choice where you have to choose um a guy for your i can't remember the actual word that they use in the in the game um but basically you have to choose basically somebody who's to be next in line or you know the, ne the next in line commander under you um it's not castellan uh Oh, the word's gone. But anyway, um, basically, it's a choice between Duncan, who is Garrett's uncle. He's loyal. He's honest. He's trustworthy. Um, but he he sometimes comes across as being a bit not no. He's not really much of a fighter. He's more for the diplomacy kind of thing. But then you've got uh, Sir Ryland, who is he's gritty. He's got a bit of a bit of an edge to him. He's he's very straight to the point. Um, and he's very warfare orientated, which is a good thing, especially when your family and your house is about to be obliterated. So you got to make a choice between the two, and you know it's interesting. And that was one of the hardest decisions that I I had to make in the in this uh, episode. And eventually, I, I picked Ryland because I thought, well, if Ramsay's coming, then we're going to want to be prepared to fight them. It's you know it makes it's a sensible choice and it, and that's the thing game it's Game of Thrones when when the shit goes down the shit goes down basically and you want to be prepared so that was kind of my logic although it was difficult to turn Duncan down because he'd been good so far but I had to say you know Duncan he made a silly a bit of a silly choice really earlier in the episode he basically told sent Garrett to the wall behind Ethan's back technically Ethan was the Lord and that was something which I thought ah you know you can go and <laughs> go and screw yourself with that so you know that, that, that's a great thing I was role playing as Ethan and it got me involved and I was like yes you, you did this to me I'm going to do this to you but even though I'd already controlled Garrett previous in the episode and that's one of the things I loved so basically you know as a brief kind of overview and I'm going to tie this now into gameplay I'm going to move on to gameplay now um, gameplay point of view game is pretty much the same as any Telltale game so if, you, if you're a fan of any of the previous titles like The Walking Dead Wolf Among Us, Tales from the Borderlands, Jurassic Park, any of those uh, former Telltale games, and you pretty much know the structure. Although they changed it a little bit in this game, 
whereas you're not controlling one character from a point of view you're actually controlling multiple characters from a family and their point of view which is very um it's a very good way of doing it and it's very similar to the books you know with the point of view characters so it's a very nice nod to george r r martin and the, and the novels although this is based on the television series and not the novels this one i think it's i think it's the television license that they have um so you know they did a great job there and like i said going back to the whole decision point of view you know i don't know really know if the decisions i made change things too much but we won't really be able to answer that question until episode two comes out in a few months time so that's something which we're just going to put on the side for now and say okay you know we'll see see now in a few months time if those decisions hold any weight um just a final kind of mention now of the the characters and some of the gameplay aspects it was uh slightly laggy in my playthrough there were one or two moments where um i think a character i think it was actually the part where ramsey is uh flaying the man in the in the forest you're playing as garrett and you're kind of hiding behind a tree when you run over to that man when ramsey uh, disappears when he when he's gone basically um there was a kind of moment where he glitched out a little bit when i was playing it and he kind of kind of teleported from one part of the screen to the other part that might be something which could be updated in a patch in a future patch maybe um the texturing in the background you know the texture in the artwork was very good they took on you know more of an oil painting kind of artwork which it worked for the most part the backgrounds did did look a little bit untidy especially in king's landing when i was controlling mira some of the some of the kind of decorations on the wall and the plants look popped in a little bit but it's nothing that was too detracting um and yeah you know that's pretty much the gameplay in a nutshell um a little bit of lagginess a little bit of popping but nothing to be too concerned about and the gameplay is pretty much the same thing as previous telltale games except with more of a point of view kind of perspective with multiple characters i think in the future episodes that we will be introduced to more point of view characters because of course of the the ending of uh of this episode and like i said there, there are spoilers in this um in this commentary and i'm going to mention it now ethan does get killed by ramsey at the end and it was a fantastic uh conclusion to this episode and you know i just i was totally taken back by by that although saying that it is game of thrones and you know we shouldn't be surprised by anything really but i think now we can kind of conclude this uh commentary so now we're going to move on to conclusion okay so to conclude this video and this uh game i really enjoyed it you know i was on my seat i enjoyed the plot i enjoyed the story i was constantly engaged i never once felt bored playing this game and playing this episode and i'm looking forward to playing episode two the characters were a joy to play as <laughs> it had some shocking moments a very shocking ending with ethan dying which you know it's great because it, it feeds you a kind of you know i want more kind of thing which i like with video games and that's what you know i know it's one it's, it's basically series one it's not really a sequel when episode two comes on but it is the next part in this series and i'm looking forward to playing episode two which will be out probably in about two months or so time and i will be playing it on my channel of course so i'm not going to give this an actual review a dragon head review like i did with far cry 4 because i won't be reviewing this game properly with a with a score until all the episodes are out and i can review it collectively as one big game but i'm going to say i really enjoyed it and i would definitely recommend it to anybody that's a that's a fan of game of thrones slash song of ice and fire fantasy or just generally looking for a good story it's definitely a, a game it's a must play and one of the most enjoyable games i've played this year Thank you for watching, I've been Dragonheart, until next time, goodbye.